सो हाई एवरी वन इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ एरेज we can be understanding what are arrays why do we need arrays what is the use of arrays and we will later on we going to be jumping to the uh, doing some questions which are related to uh, this concept and uh, we going to be understanding the basics of this like what is happening uh, behind the scenes right so before actually jumping to this concept let us take a step back and let us go uh, back to the concept of variables that we have studied right so we all know that how to create variables and all and then we will try to connect why do we need arrays over here what is what uh, what is something that provoked us to start using arrays and why do we just cannot keep using variables right because arrays is also like storing some data right variables is also storing some data so if i just quickly go back and let me just uh take some example over here let's say i have some integer maybe the name of the integer is let's say x and the value x is holding is 5 so this is how i create a variable now what is happening when i write this line of code this x has been created in the memory the name is x and the value is 5 so what would have happened in the memory if i just go over here let's say this is my memory block inside this memory what would have happened if i wrote this line of code so there is a integer variable that has been created now integer would be of size 4 so 4 byte would have been reserved in the memory like this right now the reserved space the name of this space that has been uh, reserved for 4 bytes the name would be x right and the value that is storing it is 5 and this must have been created at some location right now just for example let's say this has been created at 700 this address can be different depending uh, where your system is creating it but 7 is just a, 700 is just an example right so let's say this has been created at 700 now obviously i have created a variable i will be storing the value inside this variable and i can use this value wherever i want right now let's take an example let's say you have to create a data in which you want to store maybe marks of your class so let's say there are 30 students in your class and you want to store the marks of all the students now obviously what you can do is you can just keep saying i will create a student 1 and the marks would be let's say 30 then i would be creating student 2 marks would be 40 then student 3 marks would be 55 like this i can keep uh, keep creating my uh students are storing keep storing their marks but what if you have to store the marks of entire college or maybe of entire university of maybe of multiple universities right so the number would be huge so this would not be efficient that you would be creating different different variables the maintenance of uh, so many variables making making the names as accessing them would be so much difficult what if there is a way that i can create a variable that can store multiple data uh like for example instead of creating all these s1 s2 and s3 what if i just can create a uh, variable and the name of the variable would be let's say marks now inside this marks i can store all these data 30 40 55 and so on so with the help of the just this marks variable i am storing multiple data in a single variable but one thing to note over here is that the data that has been stored is of same type so this is the definition of an array array is basically a data structure in which we can store the same type of data right uh, now we can be going and looking how to create an array and then later on we will be coming back and uh, checking that okay what are the advantages that we see that array is giving us so after understanding the whole concept of arrays we going to be coming back and understanding the advantages or maybe disadvantages of an array but before that let us go and let us try to understand how to create an array in the in in our coding uh, uh, ide or anything that you want to use 
so let's look at that so creating an array is very simple actually if i just go over here let's look at an example so how do i create a variable over here i said index 5 so let's take an example over here also so in order to create a in, in uh, order to create a variable what do we do we create we give let's say int x equals to 5 right so what are we doing over here first of all we are giving the type like what is the type of this integer sorry what is the type of this variable right then what we are doing over here we are giving the name we are giving the type we are giving the name and then we are assigning the value so on the similar terms we can create an array also so how do i create an array first of all you will give the type like what is the type of array you want to create let's say i want to create an array which will store the uh, which will hold the values of type integers so you can give int as the type then you can give the name so the name can be anything over here you can also give it x you can give it anything but ob obviously it will be uh, something sensible right so if you are creating the array for storing the values of the marks of the student so you can call the array name as student marks right uh, uh, like if i just call it arr let's say arr is the name of my array now one thing you need to do over here is you need to add these big brackets now these big brackets are the symbolization that this arr is not a variable this is an array so the compiler will understand okay i have a big bracket after this variable and that means this is not a variable this is a array over here and then inside these big, big brackets you can also define the the size of the array right if i say over here let's say if i write 5 over here so that that means the array would be of size 5 and then this is known as this thing that i have done over here this is known as declaring the array so what does this have done like this line of code have just declared the array what does this means let let us try to understand from the perspective of a memory so let's say this is the memory over here memory now inside this memory what would have happened if i write this line of code so obviously now i'm not creating a variable i'm creating an array so we have defined the size of array as 5 and the uh, the type is integer so we know that int is of 4 bytes right so we have created these 4 bytes 5 times so that means right now something like no or okay let me just go a step back so one integer would have been formed like this spares uh, securing the 4 bytes then i have created 5 integers like this so 2 3 4 5 so i can uh, represent it in such a way uh, that let's say five elements have been created so i will just draw something like this one two three four and five and uh, each box is taking four bytes so the total size that this array is acquiring in the memory would be 20 bytes and the position from where it, it start uh, like the array has been initialized in the memory let's say the location would be let's say 100 so the first element over here which is created this one this box is created at 100 memory now in array the um, the elements are placed in contiguous memory like they will be one after another right that is why it is easy to access elements in an array because i know that the next element would be uh, the like after this the first element the second element would be after first element third element would be after second element right so if this box over here is created at 100 index and the size of this box is 4 bytes so if i want to check where is this uh, box created so obviously it will be 104 because 100 101 102 and 103 these four bytes are taken over here so this box over here would be at 104 similarly this box would be at 108 and so on right so if my one data is taking x bytes so the next would be 
let's say the integer is taking four bytes or maybe a character is taking one byte so if i have created the array of a character the first element would be at be 100 second would be at 101 and then so on right so this is how i have seen that if i write this line of code something like this will happen in the memory now let us try to uh, write the code for this and let us try to understand that uh, what if i initialize the array uh, what will happen and how do I uh, no so this is not initializing actually this is a declaration if I want to initialize I need to put some values inside this right I have not initialized it with anything right now but we will see how will we initialize it in the code so let's go and let's check in the code now so over here let's try to understand how can we create array right so let us write over here int arr so this arr is now right now a variable but if i want to create it make it a variable uh, make it an array over here so what i'll do i'll just put the symbol over here and i can give some size so let's say the size is 5 so this is a simple declaration of an array now let us try to see that if i have only initialized if i have not initialized my array if i have only declared it so uh, what is those five boxes holding right now so let us try to write a for loop over here so let's say for int i on uh, arr and let's try to just see out the values like this and let's run it uh, so i need to include the namespace also so using namespace let's run it again so what do we see over here uh, uh, some 9185 something minus 137 second value like these are the garbage values that we are getting over here if i try to run it again you can see that now this is different right so it is basically just uh, storing some garbage value in my uh, in my box so if you do not if you just declare the array if you do not initialize it it will be having uh, garbage values so i have to initialize it let's say i initialize it with 2 4 5 7 9 if i try to run it again so you can see that all the values over here have been initialized in my array so now uh, second thing we're gonna see is how we can in uh, we have initialized it but how we can access or modify my array so now let's see about that so coming to the accessing the elements accessing and modifying this is very simple uh, concept in arrays if i want to go to some particular element of the array so let's say the array that i have created over here it has some values so what are the values let us check that uh, 2 4 5 7 and 9 okay so 2 4 5 7 and 9 now here, here comes the concept of uh, indexes okay so over here i have this array 2 4 5 7 and 9 now arrays are basically have indexes uh, which starts from 0 so the first element will be at 0th index then first index second index third index and fourth index so you can see that over here i am having one two three four five elements over here and the index goes till four similarly let's say if i have one two three four five six seven eight let's say these are the elements of the array so the array will start from zeroth index and it will go till seventh index if i have zero to n elements in my array so my index will start from 0 and it will go till n minus 1 right so in order to access the last element of the array we will go to the n minus 1th index so these are the indexes that i have over here now if i want to access any element of the array i can directly go to that index and i can access that like for example if i want to uh, get what is at the second index so i can just directly go to the 
index of the array right so how will i do that it's pretty simple actually so over here let me just try to say uh see out let's try to print out the array 2 i'm i'm just going to comment this out for now and uh, let us try to run it and let's see what is the output so the output is 5 obviously the element which is present at the second index is 5 if i try to access the fourth element the output would be 9 if i try to access the fifth element like the element which is present at the fifth index now you can see that this compiler is giving me an error and saying that array index 5 is past the end of the array so that is basically going out of bound there is no such element which is present at the fifth index over here so this is my 0 1 2 3 and 4 there is no 5 over here right so if i try to go outside the bounds of the array it is going to throw me an error so that is maybe one uh, disadvantage that whenever we create an array it is of fixed size so we need to stay inside the bounds of the arrays right if i try to add one more element over here and change the size to 6 it is uh, gonna say that uh, now i can access the fifth L, uh, index element right so that is something that you need to take care of now if i want to change the element which is present at let's say the fourth index right uh, so if i say over here whatever the element is present at the fourth index so array at 4 if i make it 90 and again i try to uh, like let me just copy the statement and uh, first of all let's try to print over here so see out i'm just gonna write before the value of uh, the fourth index and uh, after if i run this now so you can see that okay i need to put maybe an endl also endl now if i try to run this so this says before the value was 9 after the value was 90 so if i am trying to uh, like print my array again over here so you will see that now the new array would be 2 4 5 7 and 90 so this is how you can go to any index of the array and you can access the value you can check what is the value present over there and you can also modify the value of that particular index but we need to keep in mind that we cannot go outside the bounds of the array we need to stay inside the bounds so now let us try to do this a very simple question what we have to do is let me just write the question over here so the question says that i have to take user input store that input in array and print it okay so we will be having let's say a very simple array over here now you can choose the size of the array according to you so let's say i have created an array of size 5 or maybe of size 10 so you have to ask the user to input 10 numbers or maybe 10 names or whatever you like and you have to store all the user input in this array so let's say you are asking the user to input 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 numbers over here right so uh, you will be uh, so obviously when we are storing the data in this array we will be taking input one by one like i'll be asking the user for the first number that will go over here then for the second number that will go here third number it will go here so i will obviously i'll be uh, like needing a loop for this right so i can uh, create a loop and i can keep asking the user input again and again uh, until i have reached the last index of the array so i will keep taking user input i will keep storing that in uh, each of the boxes and then later on i can apply another loop and i can I just print out all the elements over here right so this is a very simple question and uh, let's try to do it in our code but before i do it for you i would want you guys to try it once and see if you are able to solve it or not otherwise you can uh, come back and check how i am doing this so let's go back to our editor okay so let's write the code over here
let me just comment this out for now so the uh, first thing i need to do is i need to create this array over here right so i'm just going to say i need to create an array of size 7 now i am not initializing it i'm not initializing it with some values over here why i'm not initializing it because i need the user to input those values so i will just declare my array and what i'll say is i will take the input from the user one by one so maybe first of all i'll just see out a message over here and i'll say enter uh, seven numbers like this then what i'm going to do is i'm going to run loop over here so i'm just going to say uh, for int i equals to zero i is less than seven and then i plus plus now what i need to do is i need to take the input each input uh, so how will i take the user input with the help of cn right now when my index is zero where do i want my array to be at my ith position of the array right so i'm gonna say arr of i like this so this is how i will take the user input in this loop uh, when the value of i is zero so the index is zero so the first input will go at the zeroth index then the value will increment by one then the uh, the second input will go at the first index then third index uh, second index third index fourth index like that so this is how i will uh, run this loop uh, seven times and my input will be uh, taken uh, from the user then what i can do is i can just say numbers are like this and i just need to print so you can just use the 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 loop that we have used uh, uh like int i the normal for loop like equals to zero i is less than seven i plus plus and what i need to do i just need to see out what the ith element of the array so like this so if i run this now and let's see so it is asking to enter the seven numbers so i'm gonna say uh, one two three four five six seven so the numbers are three four six five two one three so these are the numbers that i have been asked from the user and then i am basically just storing them in the array and then i'm printing them out uh, with the help of another loop and then the another question can come up uh, with this which can say that whatever the number that user have input let's say the user has uh, add like given some numbers just for uh, simplicity let's say the numbers are uh, 1 2 5 7 3 4 9 so whatever the numbers the users ha have input i need to calculate the sum of all the numbers so if i want to do this it's very simple obviously if i am iterating over this array so i know how will i iterate using a for loop i can go to each index of the array maybe what i can do is i can take this number so let's say i am iterating with the help of i variable right so i can say over here that let's say this is my i variable so the value of i i need i can add in the next uh, element over here so i can say one plus two so whatever the result of this plus this is so that result let's say the result is three okay i can add three in five then whatever the result of this entire thing will be let's say eight i can add that in seven so what i need to i i'm doing over here is when i'm iterating in the loop i'm just uh, taking the the last sum and i'm adding the next element to that so the next question that can come up uh, over here it can be uh, like I need to calculate the sum of all the numbers which are given by the user to me right so let's say for an example the user has given me seven numbers such that one two three four five six seven so these are the seven numbers which are given by the user to me I have to just give me the I have to just calculate the sum of this entire array right now it's very simple actually if you see 
we are iterating over the entire array right what i need to do i just need to say that when i am on this element so let's say i am iterating over this array with the i ith uh, variable right the variable name is i so when i is here can i say that this uh, one i can add it in it in two so when i add these two numbers i'll get three now next thing when i i goes here can i say that i can add the the previous sum in the next number so this will become 3 and 3 6 so when i will go here can i say that i can add the current number to the previous sum the previous sum is 6 so it will become 10 so like this i can keep uh, going in the entire array and i can just find the sum of the array over here right so what i need to do i just need to maybe create a variable uh, sum that will just hold the value of the the sum of the uh some part of the array and the next number will be added in that current sum right so that is the logic that i need to do over here so if i just go back over here and let's say i have this variable int sum and initially the sum will be zero right so can i say that when i am iterating over this array over here uh it is basically going from 0 to 7 and it is just printing out all the elements maybe here i can say that the sum will hold the value so plus equals to arr of i what does this means this means that when my array is at the of the at the zeroth index right so if i just go back over here over here so in the first iteration the i will be at 0 so what i am doing over here is i am basically saying that sum will be equals to uh my the current i th element so it will be 1 right when i go back uh in the next iteration the value will become 1 that means my i will be at 1 index now the value of sum is already 1 so if i go back over here sum is already 1 and my i is over here now what i say that i am basically just adding the 2 in the current value of the sum so that's why plus equals 2 so sum will become 2 sorry 3 2 plus 1 3 in the next iteration i will be at this index what i'm saying i'm saying sum plus equals to i that means in the current value of sum i am adding ith value so it will be 3 plus 3 it will become 6 so in this way i can calculate the value of the entire sum so over here if i when i come back when i come back out of this loop i can just try to say see out uh the value of whatever the value of the sum is i just need to see out that i'll also add endl over here and uh, i'll also add endl over here now let's try to run it and let's see what is the output so i need to enter seven numbers over here so let's say for simplicity i add 1 2 1 1 1 right so the numbers are 1 1 1 1 1 and the result is 7 so over here also i need to add c out and l so spelling mistake this one let's run it again my bad so there it is i have all these numbers over here and the value is 7 so the sum is 7 so this is a very simple question Uh, as a practice, what I want you guys to do is just try out and uh, tell me how will you calculate the average of the array. Now you know the formula of average, right? So whatever the numbers that user have input, you have to calculate the average of that. So just try it out, and uh, now we will be proceeding further uh, with the next concept. So after understanding all of this. Uh, let us now try to understand what are the advantages of using arrays advantages and maybe we can also have a look at disadvantages right uh, on the go so 
first thing that comes to my mind would be the efficiency that array provides to us right now what do i mean by efficiency the uh, accessing any element in array is very efficient right if i have this array over here and i want to access this element i can just directly go to this index and i can access it right i don't have to uh, traverse from the beginning and i need uh, with that with the help of that traversal i will go to that element no not like that i can just directly go to this third index over here so this will be 0 1 and 2 and this will be 3 so i can directly access this element so tracking the elements getting the elements is pretty efficient in arrays so that could be one advantage uh, that you can think of for the arrays right second would be uh, memory optimization so memory optimization basically whenever we are creating an array we are defining the size of that array right so if this is the array that i am creating over here i'll say arr and let's say i have created the array uh, this array of five elements now the array will be of fixed size so there will be no wastage of the memory over here i will only be saying that this much are the elements i will be requiring uh, requiring for my operations so i can create the array of that particular size only i do not need to uh, maybe create uh, you know array which is of a very big size and the num the requirement is only let's say five elements and the size is 100 right if i know that there will be only requirement of five i can create the size five so uh, with the help of uh, this thing i can optimize my memory uh, with the help of array but if you think this could be a dis uh, advantage also if you think over here uh maybe if i have uh, like defined the size of the array i have fixed the size of the array it will be difficult for me to change it over the runtime so we cannot change uh, the size of an array on runtime the size is fixed so that might be a case of uh, disadvantage also that because of fixed size of the array uh maybe it is very difficult for me to like resize like for example if this is an array and if there are like elements over here one two and three and let's say i want to add one more element so i cannot do it over the runtime over here i cannot do like this so what can i do in that case is maybe i can create another array of double the size and i can copy all the elements which are previously in that so one two three four five like this so I can say one, two, three, four, and then I can add another element over here. So this could be the one way. But yes, maybe at some point of time, this can be a disadvantage also that I have the array of the fixed size. So depending on the need that what is the use case, you will be deciding which type, uh, which type of data structure you will be using, right? So maybe over here, I can also mention that uh, uh, fixed size and difficult to resize this could be one disadvantage for the array right another thing that uh, comes to my mind uh, of disadvantage would be that let's say if i want to maybe insert or remove elements in the array that is a big hassle for me let's say if i want to remove this five from here I need to remove this and then all the elements which are ahead of this I need to shift them back over here so a shifting would be required right because arrays are uh, uh, the elements of the array will be in the contagious memory so deletion and insertion is a is a big pain in the arrays so that could also be one disadvantage of array so if you are, have a very uh, heavy insertion and deletion operation uh, in your uh, like whatever the app you are making whatever the website you are making and you are inserting and deleting the data very frequently so array might not be the good choice in that case right you can think of some other data structure so insertion and deletion this is a bit like kind of a disadvantage for the array right and uh, a few more things that you can think of uh, maybe one disadvantage could be that uh, uh, there is a lack of key value pair support 
like we cannot create keys and value like, like we have you might have seen in python or some other programming language we have dictionaries right in which we have a key and a value so in arrays we cannot do that we can access by the index obviously but we cannot have the key and value uh, pairing over here in the in the array right Okay, so next up, uh, we're gonna be having look at a uh, few of the questions uh, regarding arrays, and uh, there will be some problem statements, and there will be some logic building around the arrays. So I would be giving you the solution also, but once I explain the problem to you guys, I would want you guys to just uh, think of it and see how that can be solved, and uh, then later on we will be dry running the code, we will be writing the logic over here, and uh, let's try to solve few of the questions which are like very beginner friendly and uh, uh, very easy to understand uh, for the arrays 